again to the third part of this special series Mo'adim Le Simcha wishing everybody a good holiday to school Shanim Rabot tonight's event has been sponsored for Refua Shilema of Hacham Hayim Admon Ben Rachel and all of Hole Amo Israel, they should have Refua Shelema Bekarov. This was done by the rabbi's students, Rabbi Admon Nahum. Hashem should give him Refua Shelema. Also, also, unfortunately, we have to mention that it's for Le'elui Nishmat. It's in memory of all those Neshamot, all the people that have left us over the past few weeks 
It's been a difficult few weeks. Like we mentioned last time, in a way it's difficult to come here and do this. But we know that we have an obligation, an obligation A of the holiday, it is Hola Mu'ed. Plus, we have to awaken Rahameh Shamaim. And we get here to get we, we gather here together tonight again. A to sing to Hashem and B to pray to Hashem that He should give Rifuash to those who need it. He should give peace of mind to those who are worried, and he should have an aliyat neshama for all those who left us. We start by singing the Hallel. We're going to be singing the Hallel. We want to thank the Salem brothers again for making this so special. They're going to be singing the Hallel, the last part of the Hallel. The part that we usually sing together in the Bet Knesset. The Hallel actually are chapters of Tehillim that describe the close relationship that Hashem has to Am Yisrael, how He has displayed that through the years. But the last chapter, the last Perek, Mina Metzar Karatiya, it talks about what that connection is supposed to lead up to. That connection that we have with Hashem is supposed to lead where we live a life of bitahon. We live a life where we fully trust in Hashem. Like we say, Mina Metzar Karatiya. When there's troubles out there, I call to Hashem. Yes, I make my hishtadlut, I make my effort to do whatever I need to do, but I know that it's all in the hands of the Creator. When I have troubles, I only call to Hashem. I only have trust in Him. Now we say, Hashem will open, the tzara will open that narrow road and it will become wide. He will answer me. That is why the shofar that we blow in Rosh Hashanah or the place we blow from is very small. It's very narrow. Tsar. But the sound comes out from an area that's wide. Rahav. We call to Hashem when there's tzara. That's what Am Yisrael knows how to do. That whenever there's tzara, we know there's only one address. And this perek of Tehillim is an expression of the bitahon that a person has, the trust that a person has in Hashem. David HaMelech tells us in Tehillim something amazing. He says, Rabim la rasha, that a wicked person has a lot of pain inside of him. Even if on the outside you may not see it, but a person who lives a life of rish'ut, has a lot of pain that resides within him. Rabim ovim larasha. But then he says, Ve'abotayah badonai. But the one who trusts in Hashem, Hesed yesovevenu. He will be surrounded with kindness. The question is, what is the beginning of the pasuk that talks about a rasha? And the end of the pasuk that talks about a person who trusts in Hashem. How are they connected in the same pasuk? The Midrash says, that this pasuk is teaching us that a person is boteyah b'ashem, a person who trusts in Hashem, even if he's a rasha, even if he doesn't have merit because of his actions, but he turns to Hashem and he has full trust in Him. Ha boteyah b'ashem, afilu rasha. Chesed Yesu Vebenu. If you look to Hashem and you put your trust in Him, He will surround you with kindness. That's what the Hafez Hayim writes. That the Midav Bittahon, Bittahon and Hashem, he says, En talui biskhutim. It's not dependent on merit. It's its own section, its own area. It's a force of nature. That if you trust in Hashem, Hashem will be there for you. That's what the Nefesh Hayim writes. That it's a Sigula Nifla'a. He says there's a wonderful Sigula. Lehaser will batel me'alav. 
a person should remove from him all the dinim, or if he has any kind of judgment against him, in Shamaim, to remove them, that a person should set into his heart an odd milevado, that there's nobody besides Hashem that could hurt me. There's so, nobody that could help me. I'm, fu- I'm completely tied into his hands. A person who has those feelings in Od Melevado, he says there will be a segula nifla'a, an amazing segula to remove them. And the purpose of our tefilot and the purpose of all the tzarot actually is to bring us close to Hashem. Hashem wants us to call out to Him because that is the purpose of our life. Lehit aneg al Hashem, to have pleasure by being close to Hashem. So actually, when we have bitahon, this is the purpose of all the tzarot. Sometimes in life, we get lost. We fall asleep. Hashem sometimes sends us a reminder. And that reminds us of who we really are in the hands of. That is the final pedic of Tehillim. That's where we're supposed to get to. So we're going to be singing together the parts of Mina Metzar. Each one will be done in its own song. And we hope that we will all get an aliyah from it. B'chavod.
feelings over the last few weeks has been the feeling of loneliness. People who made Siddharim alone or made it just with a husband and wife where initially they expected to have many children and grandchildren. People that are lonely, sick in the hospital by themselves. People with beautiful families. People who lost a loved one and are now home without a father or a mother. And then those that are mourning right now, and they're not allowed to begin now, so they're waiting for their mourning to begin by themselves, where siblings can't even be next to each other. One man told me, he says, I went to tell my mother that her husband, my father, passed away, and I couldn't give, even give my mother a hug. There's an intense loneliness right now. In Israel, on the first night of Pesach, there was a security guard that saw an older couple, older religious Jewish couple, having a said that by themselves. So the security guard, a non-Jew, took a picture and posted it somewhere. And the next day, the old man and the said that passed away. There's an intense loneliness. And it's because of this that there's a pasuk in this last section of Hallel that we're about to sing that resonates so deeply with me. Even ma'asu ha'bonim, rosh pina, the stone that the builders were disgusted with, that they despised, ha'yitale rosh pina, it became the cornerstone, it became powerful. There are so many people that have had at points in their life felt down and low and they didn't realize how much Hashem was with them and how very soon they would be on top and they would be good and they would be strong. And the Midrash on this Pasuk in Tehillim comments, Abraham Avinu was just a young man wandering and searching. searching. A small stone on the side became the cornerstone. Yosef at Sadiq, languishing in jail by himself. Haital Rosh Pina became the leader and powerful and strong. David was a little shepherd, discarded even by his brothers, and eventually became the king of the Jewish people. Moshe Rabbeinu was a fugitive and became the greatest leader to ever live. But then the Midrash comments. That our nation in Mitzrayim, even Masu Abonim, it was a, just a, a stone. We were nothing. We were in bondage and slavery. And only a soon time later, we were floating and walking in clouds. Because this is what Bore Olam does. I'll give you one example that inspired me so much this past summer when I was in Israel. There's a, a group of Hasidim. They're called the Belzer Hasidim. Famous across the world. During the Holocaust... The Belzer Rebbe lost everything. His children, all of his children, and his wife. He had one brother who also lost all his children and his wife. Somehow they survived. Most of Belzer Hasidut, hundreds of thousands of Jews from Europe were wiped out. So here's this lone man in Israel with nothing left. Formerly a Rebbe, now Eben Masua Bonin, just a stone on the side. At one point, after the Holocaust was over, he met the Ger Rebbe, who also lost most of his family. And they hugged, and they embraced, and they said, just like Yosef and Yaakov, each cried on each other's soldiers, Yosef and Benjamin, each tried, cried for each other. The Ger Rebbe said, I'm going to cry for you, and you're going to cry for me. The Belzer Rebbe got remarried and never had any children. His brother got remarried and had one child. 
And when the child was one years old, the brother passed away. This baby's father passed away. So the Belzer Rebbe started to raise this boy. When the boy was about nine years old, now his uncle passed away. He has this little boy. He's a nine-year-old kid. He lost his father. He lost his caretaker. His uncle he has nothing left. But again, Hayatah Rosh Pina. Today, he's the Belzer Rebbe for over 50 years. And in this past summer, when I was in Israel, I took an apartment that happened to be near Bells, which is one of the biggest structures in Judaism. And I visited a tish on a Friday night, which had thousands of people there. Because that stone that was people maybe were disgusted with or disgraced or on the side or felt alone, didn't realize one thing. Me'et Hashem ha'itazot. This is from Bore Olam. And he niflat ben. And it's a wonder. How could this happen? A little orphan kid be a leader of such a powerful part of Judaism. The answer is, it's from Bore Olam. So you, if you're home right now, you're alone. Or you're missing a loved one. Or even ready to mourn. Or sad. Or crying. Or praying for a close relative. You need to know that Hashem can bring you back so fast. And could bring your family's strength back. And your family's glory back. And your confidence back. And your hope back. So you may feel alone. But you're never alone with Borei Olam on your side. You may feel like a discarded so stone. But you never know soon you're going to be Hayatah Rosh Pina.
בשם אדוני פרחנוכם מבית אדוני ברוך הבא בשם אדוני פרחנוכם מבית אדוני someone were to ask us what was the point that made a man like Yaakov Avinu great? I think we would have a very hard time answering that question being that Yaakov Avinu had so many qualities how would we know which one of those qualities made him Yaakov Avinu? However, the beauty of the Torah is that it's able to give us guidance. Hashem knows which are the points that make a person great. He could be full of accomplishments like a pomegranate. But Hashem knows how to identify the shoresh, the root that all those accomplishments came from. So what was so special about Yaakov Avinu? There is a beautiful Midrash that comments on a Pasuk that talks about when Yaakov was told by his parents, Yitzhak and Rivka, that he should escape and go live in a different country, go to live by Laban, his uncle, and the Pasuk says that Yaakov's reaction was, Vayishma Yaakov el Abiv ve'el Imo. Yaakov heard, he listened to his father and to his mother, Vayelech Padena Aram. And he went to Padan Aram. The Midrash on this Pasuk is bothered. Why is it necessary to tell us that he listened to his father and mother? We know that his father and mother told him to go. And we see, Vayetzei Yaakov Meber Shava. Yaakov went. So if they told him to go and he went, so he obviously listened. Why does the Pasuk have to say, Vayishma? Yaakov heard, he listened to his father and mother. Says the Midrash, a most powerful idea. There's a Pasuk that Shlomo Melech says in Mishle. 
Derech ish yashar be'enav. That every person, his road in life, the way he does things, in his eyes, are perfect. Of course, people make mistakes along the road. But the general outlook of anything he does in his eyes is perfect. His, his derech of being a husband is perfect. His derech of being a father is perfect. His derech of being a friend is perfect. His derech of being a Jew is perfect. The way he attends Bet Knesset is perfect. Everything he does is perfect. Again, he may make mistakes. He may make mistakes and he'll agree to that. But his general road is perfect. Derech kol ish yashar be'inav. Every person thinks their road is perfect. Of course, we know that not, not every road is perfect. We see so many people out there hurting themselves. We see so many struggles out there caused by the person himself. So many unhappy people. So for sure, not every derech is correct. That's for sure. So what's a person supposed to do? How can he know he's doing the right thing? How can he know he's on the right derech? If every derech he's on, he thinks it's perfect. That's how Hashem made the world. That everyone thinks their way is the way. Says Shalom HaMelech, the solution is The wise person is the one who takes advice from people who know better than him. People who have experience. People who care for him. People who have proven they know how to live life. You don't know everything there is to know. Because life is full of experiences. And every age you learn something, but then you move on to the next age. And that's a new situation. You figure out, kindergarten, now you're in elementary school. By the time you figure that out, you're already in high school. By the time you get that, you're already out there in the world. Then you get married, that's all new. Then you have children, that's all new. Every step of life, till the end, is new. Life is full of challenges. So how are you supposed to know what to do? It's all new. It's new for me. It's new for you. Says Shalom HaMelech, Shomea le'aitza hacham. You have to be a person who asks advice from people who are older than you, people who are smarter than you. Ask your parents. Ask your grandparents. Ask your great-grandparents. Study their books. Study the great rabbis' thoughts and ideas. Study the lives of the great people that preceded us. Study about the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Study the advice of Hashem. Who can give you better advice than God Himself? Says the Midrash, you know what made Yaakov special? Because when Yaakov heard the advice that his father and mother gave him to leave and go live by Lavan, he didn't agree. He didn't feel that was enough reason to leave his parents and his country to go live with the crook, Lavan. He thought, to fight Isav, I could fight Isav. I'll get bodyguards. We have many dangers in the world. We don't just run away. We figure it out. Yaakov felt he wanted to stay. But then says the Pasuk, Vayishma Yaakov el abivel imo. Yaakov understood that just because he thinks his derech is perfect, it may not be perfect. You better listen to people who know better than you. He understood that Yitzhak and Rivka knew better than him. They were older, they were more experienced, they, was, they were wiser. And he took their advice. Says the Midrash, this is the greatness of Yaakov Avinu. And that's the downfall of Shimshon, says the Midrash. Shimshon also had a situation where he asked his father he wanted to marry a certain girl. And his father told him, no, not for you. Shimshon comes back to his father and says, no, ota kahli, I want that one. Kihi yashra be'enai, that's the one who I see is right for me. Says the Midrash, he followed his own intuition when he had the advice of someone greater. What makes a great person is that he listens to advice. The soreru more, that child who's off the derech, what makes him off the derech? What's unique 
about him? What's so destructive about him? Pasuk says, Enenu shomea. He doesn't listen to his parents. His parents love him. His parents want what's good for him. But he thinks, well, I know better. The song that we're going to sing now is a beautiful song about a tree, an old tree that has so much wisdom, so much to share. It's the tree of the Avot, the tree of the Imahot, the tree of our own parents and grandparents, our own great rabbis. This tree sees a little leaf that just came into the world, Ale Katan. And while it's looking at this little leaf, it tells him, I know that you think you are a know-it-all. You think you have everything figured out. You're so sure of your opinions and of your way of life. But maybe you should learn to listen to me. I have a lot of experience for you. I have a lot to share with you. Our parents and grandparents, our avot and imahot have so much wisdom, so much that they can share. But we have to be open to listen. A beautiful song about the advice of this tree to this young leaf. That's starting in this world.
to celebrate what's considered the greatest miracle in the history of our people, Kiryat Yam Suf. Yet, Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes, almost 250 years ago, that there's a greater miracle than the splitting of the sea. He says the greatest miracle in Jewish history is the fact that we are still here today. The fact that we still stand the fact that we'd endure, endure through every challenge, every wind, every storm, every hurricane. And part of what we held on to during those challenging times were the words of the song we're about to sing. I believe with a firm belief as the Rambam writes in his 13 principles, that the Mashiach will come, and even if he's delayed, that means even if I don't know when he's going to come, it doesn't matter, I still wait and I still hope that he can come on any day. It's a song that's given our nation strength through Kazakhs and Crusades, through peaks, and deep valleys. It's known that there were cattle cars taking thousands of Jews to concentration camps. And in those cars at times, they would sing this song. There were groups that have sang this song in gas chambers. 
Because even if you take me, you never take away this hope and this belief. I'll tell you a story that just captures a little bit of that power and that strength. It was in the Holocaust, in the concentration camp. The story was told in 1995 at the Agudah Convention. A man got up to tell the story. It was the Agudah Convention that was celebrating the 50 years since the conclusion of the Holocaust. He says, let me tell you the story. His name was Yosef. He says, I was in a concentration camp. And I had a friend, Akiva. We were two friends in the Holocaust. He was older than me. And it was run by this Nazi. Herr Per, his name was. This man was crazy and very moody. Sometimes he'd be nice, sometimes he'd be a devil. He says, it was a few days before Pesach, and my friend says to me, let's go ask him to bake matzot. Are you crazy? So let's go ask him to bake matzot. So finally he convinced me, and I go into this man's room in his office, and he looks at me like I fell from the moon. And he says, okay, yes. Go and bake them. We said, one second, we don't have flour. He says, okay, I'll figure it out. He tells a Polish man, I'll give you off. Go get flour. We knew the Polish man would give him money. And so we baked matzahs. We got women together and we baked matzot. And then it was the first night of Pesach. And we were in our barracks together eating matzot. And this hairy pair walks into the room with a basket of bread. And every time a different man would be, everyone would take one piece of bread. And this day passed passed around the basket and almost all of us don't take. He walks over to me and he says, eat it. We're frightened. He has a gun. He could do anything. He's a Nazi. We don't know how to respond. Then he goes over to my friend, Akiva, eat it. He says, no. He says, no. He says, you believe in your God. He's left you. He's forsaken you. He gave up on you. He says, not true. He says, what? Look at you. He says, our God has not forsaken us. Not now and not forever. He says, how could you say that? He says, look, you let us make matzahs, didn't you? If we're the Jew, we always endure. Akiva and his friend... They survived the Holocaust. But it's that mentality, it's that courage, it's that strength, it's that belief that no matter what we're going through right now, we're going through a storm. And there are those that want to feel weak and down. No, I mean, I believe with a firm belief that the Mashiach is coming. And it's that journey that we celebrate. It's that journey that gives us courage and strength and hope. It's that journey that we hold on to like a rope. And it's that journey that we know will bring the Mashiach. I don't know if it'll be tomorrow or in whatever Hashem decides, but it's the rope of hope that I'll hold on to through every twist and every turn, every peak and every valley and every storm. And right now, it's that line that gives us so much powerful strength.
song is a midrash that talks about what will be when the Melech Mashiach will come. It says that he will stand on the roof of the Bet HaMikdash and he will say the following to the Jewish people. He will say, Anavim, humble ones, Anavim, humble ones, Higia Zeman Geulatchem, the time of redemption, of your redemption has come. This Midrash is not only telling us about what will happen, but it's instructing us about how a person is able to get redemption, not only in the time of Mashiach, but in their own lives. We have Goel Yisrael that we say every day. It's not only referring to the Mashiach, it's referring to a person being redeemed from different issues that is going on in his life. The instruction is that to merit Geulah, you need Anava, you need humility. The Holy Ramban, one of the greatest men that ever lived, when he wrote a letter to his son, he told his son, you should always be thinking about this characteristic of anava, of humility. He says, Shehi mida tova, mikola midot tovot. There are so many beautiful characteristics. Which is the greatest one, the greatest virtue of all. How would we know? But the Ramban says to his son, the greatest virtue is humility, anava. So always think about it. Always try to see if you're living by it. Anava is sometimes misunderstood as weakness, as someone who is hunched over, who has no voice to talk, doesn't have an opinion to share, very humble person, very weak person. That is a mistake. Because the Torah tells us that the most humble man that ever lived was Moshe Rabbeinu, alava shalom. Moshe Rabbeinu was a man who spoke up. He was the man who went in front of Paro Melech Mitzrayim. He's the one who went to fight with the angels to bring down the Torah. He's the one who rebuked Am Yisrael when he saw necessary. He was a leader of Am Yisrael. Yet he was considered humble. 
the most humble. Humility is not weakness. Humility means that a person understands that whatever he has in his life, his body, his life, his accomplishments, they are gifts that Hashem gave him. Yes, he could take credit for the effort and the choice that he made. He made a good choice. Take credit for that. But everything else Hashem did for you. If you're tall, Hashem made you tall. If you have nice eyes, Hashem made you have nice eyes. If you can walk, it's because Hashem gave you that ability. If you have a good head and you have good ideas and good thoughts, Hashem gave you those, those ideas. Hashem gave you that brain. And then it gets more complicated. Even when you're out there and you're working and you're making and you're doing or you're learning and you're accomplishing, you're able to teach and you're able to do. You should know it's a gift from Hashem. Don't take credit for it. Don't say it's me. Don't say it in your words and don't act it with your actions. A humble person understands that what Hashem gave him is a blessing. And therefore, he doesn't take credit for it. He says, thank you, Hashem. Somebody asks him, wow, you're so successful. Baruch Hashem, what am I? I just did my effort. Hashem is the one that blessed me. He talks the talk and he does it with his actions. You see the anav, he's out there giving money. He's out there helping people because he knows it's not his money. In fact, when he gives it, he says, thank you for letting me give it to you. Because I know that as a blessed person, I was given the money so I could share it. Thank you for being the recipient. A humble person is always giving credit to where credit is due. A humble person lives a very special life. A very beautiful, calm life. A person who doesn't have fear of looking imperfect. A person who will ask his friend, you have any good advice for me? If you ever see me do something wrong, please tell me. That's what a humble person is. Yes, a humble person is right now, gets on the phone and tells the people around him, not everybody, but tell a few trusted people, please, when you see I'm doing something wrong, please tell me. I may not realize. I'm not perfect. A humble person doesn't look to take credit. If he could do things quietly without people knowing, he's happy to do it. He knows it's his duty to give back what Hashem has given him. A humble person is not concerned about being appreciated enough because he knows he owes so much for what he has received. A humble person is not trying to be above others. You will see him talking to every type of person. There's no classes for a humble person. Every person is a gift. Every person is a tselem elokim, is an image of God. And he treats them that way. He treats the rich and the poor the same respect. He cares for them the same. He will be there for his friends no matter where and who they are. This is a few small points about the Midah of humility. We just read the Haggadah of Pesach. The Haggadah is to speak about our exodus from Egypt. Isn't it shocking that our nation, who is so focused on Hakarat Tov and appreciation, that we don't mention Moshe Rabbeinu at all, in the Haggadah, we don't thank him. How could that be? Where is our appreciation for Moshe Rabbeinu? We don't mention him at all, the whole night. Perhaps the answer is that by not mentioning Moshe Rabbeinu, we are giving him the greatest shevah, the greatest praise. That he was a man who was so humble. Everything that happened, he was reflected back to Hashem. Whenever... Someone gave him something, he turned it to Hashem. Not me, it was Hashem. So the, the Yetziat Mitzrayim, Hashem chose a man that no matter what kind of miracles Hashem will do, always 
he will turn it back to the Creator. He won't take credit for himself. It's not my stick that split the Yamsuf. And it's not me that made the Makot. That's the greatest Sheva HaMoshe Rabbeinu. That we go through whole Haggadah and we only talk about Hashem. We don't mention His name. He was the ultimate Anav, a humble person. A humble person lives a beautiful life of tranquility. A life of peace of mind. A humble person. You will find Him when Mashiach will be saying, Anavim, Anavim, humble ones, your time of redemption has come.
que a semana, e que a semana que eu latre. Vem na tema, menin, vem na tema, menin, reu bem e Jesus. Like a beautiful flower in the middle of the wilderness, there's been some beauty in our darkness. And I think that beauty has been in part appreciation. I'll tell you a little story of a couple lived in Israel a few years ago. And they were grandparents. And they were in the kitchen and their grandson was sitting in a high chair in the dining room. And as the grandparents were in the kitchen, and ex their expensive chandelier fell in the dining room on top of their grandson's high chair. And they come running inside frantic and frightened and they start removing the debris and all the broken pieces and after they remove it all they realize that Baruch Hashem, their grandson, was in perfect condition. He was fine. And a little while later, they made a seuda, they made a celebration, and they invited their rabbi, one of the elder rabbis of Israel. And the rabbi comes to the event, and he says, I want to show you the beauty of Borei Olam. Look at Hashem's greatness. He wanted you to lose the chandelier. But you see, if your grandson was not in the room and the chandelier just fell straight on the table and broke, it would have been expensive. You would have lost a lot of money. You would have been very upset and disappointed and frustrated. We took a big loss. But because your grandson was right there and it fell on top of him and Baruch Hashem, he was fine. Instead of that moment being such a moment of sadness, it's a moment of celebration. They're even making a party in its honor. Sometimes Hashem brings challenge, despair, and destruction. But what happens in the process is we start to appreciate everything. Just like that family appreciated their baby and appreciated that Hashem took care of their little grandson. We start to appreciate every nuance of our life. The song we're about to sing is recognizing that beauty. Its chorus is Melech Malchea Melachim. Hashem was the King of Kings. Todah Lachayim, thank you for life. But not just for life. Al Osher, Al Bechi, Al Tzachok. On happiness. Even thank you for tears. Thank you for laughter. Even when life is hard. Thank you for my second half. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my oldest son. Thank you for my daughter. Thank you for Shabbat. So many people went into Pesach this year so nervous and anxious. Would they be able to do it? And then they did it. And a three-day holiday, the respite that it gave us, the strength that it gave us, the joy that we gave us. Todah, Borei Olam, thank you. Thank you for so many of these little things that we now cherish. Because we're living in a time that seems like darkness. We cherish a tear. We cherish laughter. We cherish looking into the eyes of our little son. We cherish holding the hands of our little daughters. We cherish watching our wife in action and watching my son learn. I cherish happiness, the small bits of it we get. I cherish tears. 
I cherish hugging my children. I cherish Shabbat. I cherish being alone. I cherish being together with my kids. I cherish seeing my father simply in his window. I cherish driving in my car and passing by my brother's home. I cherish talking to my sister on the phone. I cherish holding on to my in-laws through Zoom. I cherish being able to teach my students. I cherish our rabbis. I cherish our families. I cherish our lives, our tears, our happiness, our joy, our strength, our courage, our togetherness when we're alone. Thank you on everything. Because like a rose in the middle of the wilderness, in this darkness, we gained appreciation for everything that we have from you. לך לי אבי, כי חטאתי לך, מחולי על כל פשעי. גם בימים ששכחתי אותך, היית תמיד בחיי. בכל הדרכים שהלכתי בעצם, היית לי נר לרגלי. הייתי עיוור, לא ראיתי מעבר. למה שהביטו עיניי. מלך מלכי המלכים, תודה על חיים, מעלו של על בכי על צחוק. גם כשקשה לפעמים, גם אז אלוקים, אתה לעולם לא רחוק. מלך מלכי המלכים, תודה על חיים. גם כי אלך ודרכי חשוכה, פתחתי בך אלוקיי. חצי שני על בכור וילדה, תודה גם על עושר בלי די. תודה על חגים, על שבת ששומרת, שלא ייגמר לעולם. כל יום שעובר בדרכי לגן עדן, שיוויתי אותך מול העיניי. מלך מלכי המלכים, תודה על חיים, על עושר, על בכי, על צחוק. גם כשקשה לפעמים, גם אז אלוקים, אתה לעולם לא רחוק. על בכי על צחוק, גם כשקשה לפעמים, גם אז אלוקים, אתה לעולם לא רחוק. מלך מלכי הלכים, תודה על חיים, על עושר, על בכי על צחוק, גם כשקשה לפעמים, גם אז אלוקים, אתה לעולם לא רחוק. Such beautiful words. I'm so inspired by those words, especially after Rabbi Haber spoke. We do go through life sometimes like a blind person. 
And then through these situations, we wake up. As I hear the Salem's thinking, singing, I say to myself how appreciative I am. All of us are. That they spent hours and hours to make this production. This doesn't just come in an hour. There's a lot of preparation, a lot of thought that goes into it. We have to be so thankful that Hashem planted them in our midst. We have to thank their parents. When you see such beautiful children, you have to look back and say, where's the tree that brought this? Their parents are in Eretz Yisrael. They brought up such a beautiful family. We have the Zechut that Mina Shamayim, they all came here to join us. At least these, they have more Baruch Hashem. So appreciative of their inspiration. I've become more appreciative of Rabbi Haber, Hashem Yishmereu Vehayehu, for his kohot, for his true care for our community. It hasn't been probably a day that hasn't gone by in the last month that I haven't spoken to him about something that's going on and what we can do and he's calling me and what, what is it that's missing and how can we help that one? People who are thinking about others all day long. We're so appreciative. Toda. You know, when we thank Hashem, the way we know if we really feel that appreciation or just words is, are we thanking the people in our lives? It's a good sign. Are we thanking our wives? Are we thanking our children? Are we thanking our parents? Are we saying, thank you, mom? Thank you, Dad. I'm so fortunate to have you. If you still have a mother and a father, if you still have a grandpa and grandma, reach out to them. Tell them thank you with some tears. Thank you to all the people listening. I can't tell you how many messages that I've received. I know that Rabbi Haber as well and the Hazanim as well. So many messages we get after these events. You don't know how much hezuk it gives us. We know that people appreciate it. We know that people have inspiration from it. But we all need a shoulder. Sometimes we need a shoulder to cry on. And sometimes we need a shoulder to hold us. Thank you to all of you that have been reaching out to us and telling us nice compliments and nice words. It gives us hezuk. We have to use that strength today to help other people. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you for all you do for us. And let's thank the individuals in our lives that do so much for us. The next song we're going to sing is one that everybody knows the word, Shir la ma'alot esainai leharim. We're going to sing the whole thing. We sang a few weeks ago parts of it. I just want to take one portion of it that's so relevant to what Rabbi Haber spoke about, what I just mentioned. In this Mizmor, the Pasuk says, Adonai Shomrecha. Hashem watches over us. Adonai Tzilecha al Yad Yeminecha. Hashem is our shadow. What does that mean that Hashem is our shadow? What are we supposed to walk away with when we say those words? We say this all the time. Hashem is our shadow. Rabbi Tzadok Kohen explains. Our shadow means that his relationship with us is like that to our shadow. When a person has a shadow, he raises his right hand, the shadow raises the hand. He lifts up his foot, the shadow lifts up the foot. Whatever he does, the shadow follows. Hashem tzilcha, Hashem is our shadow. What does that mean? It means that he will relate to us the way we relate to others. Like the Pasuk says, Ve'ahavta l're'acha kamocha. Hashem says, love your friend. Ani Hashem. I am Hashem. You love Hashem? You love your friend? Excuse me? Hashem says, I will show you extra love. 
Whatever you do to others, I will do to you. Like it says in the Gemara, Kola merahem ala beriot. Those who have compassion on people. Merahamim alav min hashamayim. Hashem has compassion on them. I saw once a beautiful explanation on the famous words of Pirkei Avot. Da ma le ma mimcha. Simply it means know what's above you. Know who's above you. But the explanation goes like this. Rav Chaim and Velazhin explains. Da, you should know. Ma le mala. What's going to come from Shamaim to you? Mimcha. You're going to decide that. How is Hashem going to treat you? You're deciding it. Will Hashem have compassion on you? You'll decide it. Let me see your compassion on your wife. Let me see your compassion on your children. Let me see your compassion on those who need you. You want tzedakah from Hashem? Let me see you give tzedakah. Let me see you give of yourself. Hashem will give you. You want forgiveness from Hashem? Like we just sang, Selahli. Forgive others. How can we ask Hashem to forgive us? When we don't forgive others that hurt us. Yes, they hurt us. They meant it. They did it on purpose. But also sometimes we do things on purpose. Yet we come in front of Hashem and say, Hashem, forgive us. We made a mistake. We want Hashem to forgive us. Forgive the people in your life that hurt you. Do it now. Don't even wait for the song. Get on the phone right now and call the person that you haven't spoken to. Call the person that you're fighting with. Say, listen, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Let's forget about it. Let's have shalom. Let's have peace. Mevater. Give up of yourself. You want Hashem to give up to you? Give up of yourself to others. Hashem tzilcha al yad yeminecha. Hashem is our shadow. The way we are with other people is going to decide what Hashem will do to us. What a great time to use our kohot to reach out, to comfort others. There are a lot of people out there who need comfort today. To reach out to those who are alone. There are a lot of lonely people today. To reach out to friends and family and to reach out to perhaps enemies. To com competition, competitors. Reach out. Make a phone call. It will be very meaningful to that person. And perhaps even more meaningful to yourself. Hashem tzilcha al yad yeminecha. Hashem is our shadow. Ha 
השם ישמורך מכל רע, ישמור את נפשך. השם ישמור זכה ובואך, אתה ועד Thank <laughs> השם שומרך, השם צילך, על יד ימינך. יומם השמש לא יככה וירח בלילה, השם ישמורך מכל רע, ישבור את נפשך. השם ישמור צאתך ובואך מעתה ועד עולם מעתה ועד עולם מעתה ועד Shout out to 
למות כי אחיה ואספר מעשיה יעשור ישרניה ולמוות לא נתנני לא אמות כי אחיה אספר מעשיה יעסור ישרניה ולמוות לא ingredient, this hidden ingredient in our community that makes us tick, that makes us great, that makes us never stop. And I think that beautiful ingredient inside all of us is that we care. We care. We care about one another. We care about our families. We care about our friends. It's why so many of us go to each other's weddings. And sadly, so many of us go to each other's funerals. It's why we go to Shiva houses in droves. We care. It's why we give charity so much. And so often by so many. It's because in our community, it could be down, but it's almost impossible for you to be out. Because there's always somebody there. Because we always care. Which makes this time harder and more beautiful. Harder because it's so hard sometimes to show you how much we care. Yet at the same time it's beautiful because we feel it so deeply. And so much inside of our hearts. I'll give you one little example. Yesterday morning, the first day of Chola Moed. I woke up in the morning, I'm sitting on a couch, my wife is on the couch across from me. And I said to Marv, I said, you know, I'm, these days I just feel exhausted. It happens to be my five-year-old son was in the room, I didn't even realize he was in the room, Moshe, he's a little guy. He comes out to me, he says, Dad, are you exhausted because it feels like everybody's dying? I said, how, you, I'm, how does he even realize? He wasn't even up last night when we got all the emails the night before. We got all the emails and we got all the stories and had all the sadness. Because it's something he's feeling in the air because we're all feeling it in the air. We care. And it's at the core of our being. The Gemara Masechid Yevamot says there's three qualities of a Jew. Every Jew. Baishanim. We're shy. Rahmanim. We're merciful, we're caring people. And Gomle Hasadim, we act on that care. We do chesed, we do kindness. And it's in this final song that we're going to sing tonight. 
that we echo God's caring for His people. Because the reason why we care so much for one another is because our Father in Heaven cares so much for us. And in the song, we're going to say, Rachem na Hashem Elokeinu Hashem, please have mercy on us. On Yisrael Amecha, on your Jewish nation, on Yerushalayim Irecha, and on your city of Yerushalayim. And on Zion Mishkan Kivodecha, and on Zion, where your Bet HaMikdash belongs, on Malchut Bet David, and on Bait HaGadol, the Bet HaMikdash, have mercy. Hashem, so in this time, I said it's hard for us because it's hard for us to show how much we care. But there's a beauty because we have been. People have been giving charity. People have been supporting yeshiva in schools and taking care of poor people. Last night someone told me there's a woman in the community who's sick. Her brother posted on a chat, my sister is really sick, pray for her. 1,000 people responded. 1,000 people. Because we care. Another man opened his own organization to give out money to widows in need at this time. And before the holiday he gave. Others gave out to rabbis in the community, school teachers. And they were given. Others gave donations to shuls. Others made calls like the rabbi said and Zooms and text messages. Because we care and we care and we care. But if we care, if we really care then the way we show it most is if we don't just ask Hashem to build the Beit HaMikdash. We build it for Him. Because the rebuilding of the Beit HaMikdash is not only up to Him. He made it up to us. Borei Olam says to every one of us, when you change, when you're ready, that's when I'll be ready. So when are you ready? When are you ready to show me that you, how much you care? Tehillim is nice. Charity is nice. But do something. Be a different person. Because if, if we go through this crisis by just weathering the storm, then we don't deeply care. Because that's not what a Jew does. A Jew changes. A Jew is different. A Jew has different midot. Really different. A Jew cares by one another by changing how I pray for you. Changing how I pray every day. Changing how I learn. And not I'm going to change. Right now I'm committed to change. You can have four holiday meals in a day from today. Sitting around with the same people that you already had six or seven meals with. What are you going to talk about? Maybe you'll talk about this. Talk about how you're going to change. Talk about how you're committing to change. Not just ideas that pass around the table and then get forgotten. Commitments. I'm going to change how I dress. I'm going to change how I celebrate. I'm going to change how I pray. I'm going to change how much I learn. I'm going to change how I act in business. I'm going to change how I treat my employees. I'm going to change how I respect for real. And ultimately, it's because of this midah of how much we care that we did this event tonight. It's because we love you so much. It's because we care about you so much. It's because we're feeling your pain so deeply. Even those in homes that are all healthy have barely smiled. I want to end with this little story and then we'll hear the beautiful songs. Beautiful final song. I mentioned the Holocaust a few times. I'll mention it one more. The Holocaust was over. And there was this colonel, he was a Jewish man, and he came to the DP camps. DP camps were the place of the dispersed, displaced persons, displaced people after the Holocaust. People with no lives and no family. And he came to one particular camp, and this camp was unique. Because this camp had children. And so they set up this line on how they were going to serve food to the kids. And they had like a little area where they have soup, and they would serve each kid soup. So there's a long line of children with bowls in their hands, waiting to receive food for the first time in years, real food. And one after another, the kids are in line, and they all get their food. And then in the corner, the colonel notices there's this little girl. Maybe she's seven years old, maybe even smaller. And he goes over to the girl, and she's not on line. And he says, young girl, he bends down, why aren't you on line? 
and she just looks right through him. And he's looking at these bloodshot eyes. Young girl, th there's food. She just keeps looking right through him. No, no, we're the good people. We're here. It's over. The war is over. It changed. We care about you. We love you. It's why we're giving you food. And the girl just drops her bowl and walks over to him and gives him this big hug. And he holds this little girl tight. And he closes his eyes for two minutes. And finally, he feels on his arm tears of this girl and he opens up his eyes and he sees there's a line of children they all drop their balls and they're all waiting for a hug because we need each other badly desperately and the reason why we did this event tonight is because we want to hug you Rabbi Yadid Yes, we've been on the phone almost every day. But I wish once I could just drop the phone and give you a hug for how much you care about Am Yisrael, how much you care about your community, how much you care about your students and those that aren't your students. How much you care about the old and the young. I wish I could drop my bowl and give a hug to Mordechai Salem, to Yaakov Salem, to Rabbi Avi Salem. You've inspired us. You've energized us. You strengthen us. Our love is so deep and so strong. Rambam, I only met you two weeks ago, but I wish I could give you a hug. Kobe, you've been involved in so many events that we partake in. I wish we could just come over and drop the mask and give you a hug. Because in this time, we care so deeply. And we're going to show our caring by praying and by learning and by changing and by giving. And by showing one another that we're here for you because our community at our core, we care. The biggest flower in this wilderness is our Rahmanut. So please, Borei Olam, we're going to sing to you. We need you to build the Beit HaMikdash. We need to have mercy on your nation and on your country and on your, your city and on your people. But we're going to take the first steps to build it for you. We're going to show you how much we care. We're going to show you how much we're committed to change. And we're going to show you how much love we have for one another. Because tonight, this event, to every single one of you who are watching, I hope through the screen, you can see our love, you can see our care, and you can see how much we dropped our bowls, and we're giving you a hug. Rachel, Rachel, na Hashem elokeinu, Rachel, al Israel amecha Rachel, be al Yerushalayim irecha Rachel. Rachel, 